I'm Meredith Book, and this is Cooking by the Book. This episode, we're going to spend time with one of Ohio's greatest homegrown quarterbacks, Mr. Greg Fry. Fry, a native of Cincinnati, was a three-year starter at OSU from 1987 to 1990. He is remembered for his comeback heroics and for being the only OSU quarterback to throw for over 2,000 yards for three seasons. Greg Fry, thank you for joining us. So what have you been doing since your OSU career? Quite a bit, Meredith. Um, I spent uh, about 16 years in the real estate business. Uh, I spent about uh, well 12 years plus in ongoing in the nutritional business, which we'll get to when we start to get to making our, our, uh, our surprise today. And really, a lot of my career has been in football, football related in broadcasting. I broadcast high school football with Spectrum. I've uh, done that for over 20 years and have a blast doing that, still doing that right now. And uh, have also worked with young quarterbacks. So I train young quarterbacks, uh, middle school, high school, even college quarterbacks to help them with their fundamentals and help prepare them uh, for the game that they, that they play that, uh, that I certainly know and love. Speaking of football training, you gave me a little training earlier, but what is the name of your training company? You did a great job on Spiral too, by the way. That was <laughs> awesome. You took coaching well. Uh, QB Ohio. So if anybody wants to look that up, they can look up QBOhio.com. And um, had a lot of quarterbacks from Central Ohio and, and, and way beyond that. Quarterbacks have come from out of state to train with me. And, uh, and for me, it's just a, it's a passion to work with young men and help them grow and learn. And you know, my goal is to help put them in a position to succeed and do the best they can with the abilities that they have. I know there's different types of quarterbacks. Which style do you teach, like the running, the throwing, the both? It's a great question. Um, you know, I work on both. I mean, running a lot of times in season, quarterbacks can train in season and they can rep that quite a bit. Uh, but mostly it's throwing the football. And, and, but I would say now is the game has changed to the zone read or things called an RPO, it's called a run pass option. Um, I help them prepare for that before the season so when they get into the season, they're ready to go. Can you tell us about some of the people you've trained? Absolutely. Um, I, I worked a lot of quarterbacks over the years. Uh, the one that would probably stand out the most is Brady Quinn, who you can see on Fox uh, still doing college football analysis. He played at Notre Dame, set a lot of records at Notre Dame, a first round draft pick. Uh, for the Cleveland Browns. Um, most recently, uh, Connor Matthews is a senior this year. Uh, Dublin Kaufman had a great senior year, uh, junior and senior year, looking to play uh, at the next level. Those are some of the ones that come to mind. There have been plenty, and really, uh, I don't care what level they are. I just want to help them become the best they can. That's that's my passion. I see you've also been busy raising a family. Outside, we were doing a TikTok. <laughs> Tell me a little, about, a little bit about your family. Absolutely. My Jax is my oldest. He's 12. Um, he loves sports. He's uh, in the basketball season now, just finished up his football season. Uh, he's grown, get very tall. And then uh, Lucy as well. Lucy's eight. Uh, Lucy's adopted from China, and that's been a, a really great story to see her grow and develop. And uh, those are my kids. I see you brought your helmet, so can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, that's a, that's a cool helmet. This is, this is the actual visor helmet, and a lot of Buckeye fans will ask me about that, or as a matter of fact, they remember that helmet. Um, this was used in the 1989 season, a little bit of the 1990 season, and my coaches at the time came and told me, they said, well, you know, you're looking at the target, you know, so we want to see if we can cover your eyes up a little bit. So they came up with this idea to put the, the, the visor on there, and, you know, the, the, the ironic thing looking back is that, uh, of course, I was looking at the target because I have to kind of got to look where you're looking, right? Yeah. So um, I did it because the coaches wanted me to, but the reality is, is uh, my eyes are a little bit sensitive to light. So I frankly felt more comfortable wearing that. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is a cooking show. So can you tell us about what we're gonna make? Sure, we're gonna make uh, protein balls. These are healthy protein balls. And the story behind this is back in my day when I played at Ohio State, and even before that, I used to love making chocolate chip cookies. And especially um, in my days at Ohio State, I was good friends with the Kaufman family, Larry and Sue Kaufman, their family, really kind of took me in. And matter of fact, they don't live too far from here. And I used to go to their house to kind of get away from the university and just kind of be normal. And uh, I would make chocolate chip cookies and they just thought that was the coolest thing. So as I've gotten older and for my kids, I want to make a healthy snack. So it's, it's a little bit chocolate chippy, but it's also very healthy, healthy protein balls. So when you want a good snack, this is what you can use. First, mix your almond or peanut butter together with your honey in a saucepan. Then add your mixture to your oats. So this protein is with uh, Ivy Life, which is, uh, is a brand that I'm, I'm very familiar with that I use personally um, because it's very clean, it's very healthy. This is actually a vegan protein. Uh, it's got uh, two servings of fruits and vegetables. Uh, it's also got superfood, which is, I gotta read this because it's awesome. Chia, flax, and quinoa, among other things. 
22 grams of protein. So it's a very, the protein source is very healthy. You can actually get the same protein powder and many other health and wellness items in the description below. So while we're stirring this, you are known for your comeback heroics. Is that what you'd like to be known as, or do you think something there'd be something else you'd rather be known for? I'm really honored to be known with that because that's that was a uh, a big part of my career. Um, you know, we the, the years that I started, we didn't have a ton of success. We made a couple bowl games, but it's not like Buckeyes today where they're you know up to the national championship every year. But I think for me, um, you know, it's important to have a legacy as a quarterback or a player for that matter. And, uh, to, to be remembered in a positive note like that's very important to me. And certainly um, the comebacks are, you know, football is such a, a game that's relative to life. And, and, you know, we all have to have our comebacks in life because none of us uh, is um, void of adversity. Uh, so for, to me, for me, it, it's, I use those as coaching tools for my kids and for my you know, quarterbacks and really for anybody I come across because uh, it's such a lesson of uh, how to overcome adversity through you know, mental and physical adversity and certainly you know, when you're trailing about a lot of points as a quarterback in a football team, you know, you've got to be a great leader. You've got to be able to stand up and, uh, and lead by example and lead by how you play. So, um, yeah, I'm very proud of um, you know, what we accomplished in my years. How do you think the quarterback role in college has changed over the years? That's a great question, Aaron. I think it's changed. It's, um, you know, from a leadership standpoint, I would, I would say it's not changed. But as far as the, the, the offensive game has changed, in probably the last 15, 20 years, you know, now we're there's a lot more. You, you hear the term RPO, where it's a run pass option. Where in the past, coaches would maybe call one or two plays, and the quarterback would would call the right the right play based on the right defense at the line of scrimmage. Or in some cases, we would actually change the play. Where there was a lot of verbal going on between the quarterbacks and everybody else in the offense. And when you're playing in front of a crowd, it's difficult to do. So now it's more where you're just reading what we call kind of on the fly. So you're reading it. Uh, a certain defender on the snap to play. So the, the play could go two or three different ways based on how the defense responds on the snap. So it's more visual. Um, so I think from that standpoint, the game has changed quite a bit. You know, the, the end result, I would say, is probably similar. Uh, but that's, uh, that's an evolution of the game that's pretty fascinating. So it's cooled down enough we can put our chocolate chips in, but what is your favorite memory at Ohio State? It's hard to just say one. Um, I've, I've had quite a few, I think. Yeah, I remember my first touchdown pass um, in 1988 against Syracuse uh, in the opening game. That was a big thrill for me to throw my first touchdown pass. Um, and then certainly, I think the comeback games especially stand out. You know, uh, we beat LSU uh, in 1988. They were, uh, I think, ranked in the top 10. Uh, we beat them at home after trailing by 15 points with a couple minutes to go. And a lot of people were leaving the stadium at the time, but we came back and won that game. And uh, certainly uh, Minnesota game in 1989 where we trailed by 31 points and came back. Um, that's a big thrill. That's, that's still one of the greatest comebacks in college football history. So that's one that um, I'm constantly reminded of. And that's, that's a nice thing to be remembered for. Speaking of memories, the past two guests that we had, they've all talked about the pecan cinnamon rolls. So why, why do you think those are so special? Because like Tim said they were just good. But is there like a certain memory that you really like, like with them? I think it's part of the tradition of Ohio State, you know. And I, you know, I got the I got to watch the episode with Tim, and it's about on Friday nights before big or before all games, the team would go to the golf course at Ohio State and have this great meal. Uh, the fillets were awesome, you know, and all the other food was outstanding. But it was it was really a thing to have the pecan rolls because they were so big mm -hmm. and there was so much butter on top, you know, <laughs> and. and you know, fortunately, when you're playing at, at that level, you can eat quite a bit. And, uh, you know, some linemen would eat one or two of those. You know, I couldn't get through a full one because they were so big, but they were just so delicious. And it's just part of the history and the tradition of Ohio State. And we all so much look forward to Fridays because of that, that meal on the pecan. How did it feel to run out on the field with all the people, like, cheering you on? That was pretty amazing. It was, uh, it, it always gave you a rush. And uh, you know, because you run in length of the field with the crowd yelling, I mean, it, you, you would almost hyperventilate. But mm -hmm. the truth is, my very first time, uh, we played in Meadowlands in New Jersey. We played the kickoff classic against Alabama, and it was uh, it would have been the fall of '86. So my very first time running out, like it was running out for pregame just for warmups, you know. And I'm looking at the crowd, looking around, and I tripped mm -hmm. and fell flat on my face. 
which is what we used to call the Turk Monster God. So uh, I just bit it and all the guys around me were laughing at me. So. And these are our finished protein balls. You ready to try? Let's do it. Okay. They look pretty good. Mm. These are good. Outstanding. So these are good and good for you. They are good for you, and I think that's important. You know, I always preach a healthy lifestyle. I want to live that. I want to, I want to show it to my kids. And it's a, it's a healthy snack, you know, a little bit of chocolate chip in there. But really, if you're, if you're going to grab something, I'd rather grab this and go for a not-so-good snack. So that's yeah. why I make these, and uh, it's just we're fortunate they do taste good as well. Well, thank you, Greg, for coming on the show. That closes the book on this episode. See you next time. And don't forget to check out the link in the description for Greg's health and wellness products.